Good morning, church. It's so nice to be able to go through the church year as a rhythm of our Christian walk. Last Sunday, we ended the church calendar year on Christ the King Sunday. And after the Christ the King Sunday, this year in 2024, Jesus Christ has not come back yet. Then we are able to give, an, to give another chance to go through another new church year. And it always begins with Advent. And on the first Sunday of Advent, we light the candle of hope. In order to turn our hearts to the promise of our Savior, Jesus. Now you see, every year, when we start again in, with Advent, we are waiting. Jesus, you say you are coming again, but you are not here yet. For 2,000 years since the resurrection and reason of Jesus Christ, we are waiting for his coming, but we are not yet there for 2,000 years. We are still waiting and we look at our world, this time, this gap time between his first coming and his second coming, this world that we live in is still full of trouble, full of challenges. Let me see, where is my clicker? Okay. How can we maintain hope in the face of adversities? The world often seems broken and injustice, unjust, filled with conflict, suffering, and despair. Our Savior King says that He will bring peace and justice to our world. Do you truly believe? that Jesus will bring peace and justice to the world. It, it is really a challenge where right? if our eyes or what we see is just the suffering around us, the wars between nations and nations and the whole nature is going chaotic. So, if our eyes just look at these things, sometimes in our heart we will wonder, Jesus, where are you? Are you still the one that will come and give us hope? So, we, we need to always ask ourselves, how can we maintain hope amid adversities? How do I not be shaken or feel despair. If sometimes you, you are the one that feel despair easily, then we really need to ask a lot. Lord, help me to see that there is hope. I'm not, I'm not, going, to, I'm not going to be drowned by my own negative feeling, but I would rather choose to trust in your word, because if your word say you are the hope, but what is this hope? What will this hope look like? And so today, we will listen to what God wants to say to us through these two important passages, Jeremiah and Luke. Both passages tells of the adversities of the Old Testament era and the New Testament era. They both, when God spoke to, through his people in that time, they were not in a very smooth going time, not a good time. Remember Jeremiah, he was a prophet during the period of the fall of Judah. And the holy city of Jerusalem had become a ruin. The people were taken captives to Babylon, far away from their homeland. They are no longer there. They, they experienced war, famine, hunger, and 
many deaths, and those who still survive was taken captives. How do they find hope? Is there still hope in situations like this? God, where are you? God, we are your people. Why did you allow this to happen to us? Luke records the period of Jesus when the Roman Empire dominated in Jesus' time. There were no, they were not in, running their own country. They were dominated by the Roman Empire. The Jews had no homeland of their own. And Jesus even predicted that soon the city of Jerusalem would be conquered again. The temple would be destroyed and the people would be driven out of the Holy Land. And true enough, in year 70, just shortly, a few decades after Jesus' resurrection, the whole city of Jerusalem will tear down. Temple was destructed and not rebuilt until today. We were asked, Lord, if you say that Jesus is our Lord, you are the king, why would you allow all this to happen? Where are you? Where are your promises? In such turbulent errors, how should God's people maintain their faith? Where is our hope? So we are not just talking about people living in the Old Testament era in Jeremiah's time or in Jesus' time. We, in this world, if you look at the news, if you listen to the news, there are still wars, there are still a lot of things happened in this, uh, this world, and that this world is going from bad to worse. We are living in the end times, and closer and closer to the end times. So in this time, where there is no real peace and order yet, how do we live? And so that's why when Jesus has not returned yet, we begin another church year, starting to proclaim that there is hope. Our hope lies in God. Our hope do not lie in what we see but we choose to believe in his word. Our hope and true peace comes from the righteousness of Jesus Christ, in Jesus alone. And righteousness of God, what does righteousness mean? In the Bible, righteousness means living in a right relationship with God. Put right the relationship with God. Living in the right relationship with others. Really living in the right relationship with the creation. Everything God wants to put right. The world is drifting more and more away from God because the relationship has been broken. We need that restoration. And there's this Great doctor of the church today, I want to refer to what he explained about the event. Event means coming. He says, help us to see that there are three events of Christ. His coming in the flesh, that is in the past, who was. His coming on, in our hearts, who is. And his coming to judge the world, who is to come. In our celebration of Christmas, all these years, we hear the Christmas carols, we sing a lot of Jesus born as a baby in the manger. It's just about Jesus' first coming. And then we speak about his coming again. So we look forward to. But today, I want to make more emphasis on the present. How do we live in between time? Waiting, anticipating for his coming. The coming of Christ in the flesh. Before the incarnation of Jesus, God promised through his prophet 
Jeremiah about the coming of Messiah in a very challenging time, in a time where they have no hope on their own, no, don't, they didn't even know how long would they have to wait through this whole tunnel and darkness, God spoke. God came into the, our life and spoke through his prophet Jeremiah. Jeremiah lived in such a great turmoil and uncertainty, yet God spoke through him about a new covenant, a new relationship between God and his people. So in order to get the whole thing turned back, turned right, you need a new covenant. That's why he says in verse 14 of chapter 33, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. We may think that, God, you have forgotten your promise. Lord, you made a covenant with Abraham, with uh, Moses, but why do you allow us to face such adversities? But the Lord says, I remember my promise with the house of Israel and with Judah. God promised to write his law on their hearts. When he gave them laws in the Old Testament through Moses, law, Ten Commandments written on the tablet, and God told them, this is the right way that I want you to live as my people. And when the people couldn't keep his law, keep the right living, they went astray. God sent his prophets to tell them, hey, you have gone wayward, turn back, turn back. That was the role of prophets. And yet they continue to turn the deaf ear. They continue to go against God's heart and God's will. And eventually, God's have to let them face the consequence. Because you know that that is the end. You continue to go, of course, you bang into that war. And so this was what that they were facing at that time in Je Jeremiah's time. And God said, for this, I am not giving up on you. For those who are willing to listen and choose to trust in me, I will put my law in your heart. That is the work of the Holy Spirit, to let us have God's word, God's law in our heart. And when that's needed, we remember what he says. We cling on to his promises. And God said, that is a new covenant. The new covenant, Old Testament is Old Covenant. Testament means covenant. And there will be a new testament. God wants to help us from within. No longer you just hear and you have excuses and say that no temple, no synagogue services. I cannot hear the word of God. God said, I put a new covenant in you. I will speak into your heart through the Spirit. And this new covenant will only realize, made possible through the righteousness of God and through His promised one. And so God continues to say that there will be a righteous branch in those days. And at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. A righteous branch. This righteous branch is a prophecy of Messiah who will fulfill God's promise to David and establish justice and righteousness. A branch. When you see nothing, barren, God said a shoot will come up. A Jesse tree. That's why in Christmas time, uh, the Christmas tree, we will talk about Jesse tree. So, so a branch that new life can sprout in a very difficult time. Still, nothing can stop life from sprouting. And this life, this branch, is a righteous branch, which, which means put right, right relationship, right living. And here Jeremiah foresees a day when God's people will live securely under the righteous reign of the Messiah. And this prophecy points directly 
to Jesus, the Messiah, who is the embodiment of God's righteousness. Jesus came in the New Testament. Jesus revealed to be the fulfillment of this promise. So in a very difficult time, from Jeremiah's time to Jesus' time, they have to still continue to wait, wait for a few hundred years. How can we wait as a whole humanity, mankind? In my lifetime, I don't see that fulfilled. But do I still trust that God's word will come into fulfillment when he said he will come, he'll come. And it was when times was right, God sent Jesus. He came and he lived a righteous life. And through his incarnation and death, Jesus, in this, this first coming in the flesh, he did three important things. He defeated Satan. He conquered death. And he redeemed sinners, died for us, and received us back as children of God. These three things, Jesus in the first coming, when we lit, light up the candle of hope, we know that God's word is true. When he said he will send the righteous branch, he will do it. He mean it. So Jesus came. And so hope in this context is about the promise of righteous branch. Offers hope that transcends distress and anchors people in God's plan of salvation. Looked up to him, looked up to him, trust God and don't trust our own eyes, our own seeing and our own feeling. But this is very difficult. It's difficult. Easier said than done. Because when you open your eyes, what you see is a lot of needs, a lot of miseries. How? How? And that's why the, the next coming is the coming of Christ into our hearts. It's the present. In the present, when Jesus, after his resurrection, when, before he, he uh, was taken back, risen back to the Lord, he told his people, prepare our hearts and say that, and there will be signs in the sun and moon and stars and on earth, distress of nations in perplexity. Because the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of heavens will be shaken. Church, you see, we thought, we thought Jesus, after conquering death, he should be able to put everything back in order on this earth. No more injustice, no more war, no more uh, uh, cheatings. But remember, when his, on his first coming as a saviour of the world, he did that three things. He defeated Satan. That was in the spiritual realm. Satan has no final say on humankind. He conquered death. So whoever died in Jesus, we will know that we will have a resurrected life with him in future. He conquered death and he forgive, redeemed sinners. We know that our sins are forgiven. But for this time, the, the worldly order, the worldly power is still in a struggle. So Jesus prepare our hearts so that we don't live in such an idealistic manner and say that, why are all this still happening? Jesus already told us, nations against nations, wars that will be there, and there will be famines, there will be a lot of human fallen acts. Prepare ourselves. And when we live in this time, when we live in such time, we need to know that Lord, help us. We need you to come into our hearts. You see, when Jesus in his first coming, he saved the world. God so loved the world that he sent his son, his only son, 
into the world to die for us. That salvation is for the world, but in order to receive that salvation, we need each one to listen to his gospel, open our hearts to him, and receive him personally into our life. One soul by one soul. It's not oh, wholesale. One by one, one by one. That is the salvation. So he, on this gap time, he is still continuing to reach out to every soul so that people are willing to listen to him and turn back to him and be saved. And that's why God wants us to also partner him to be his mouthpiece, to be his hands, his legs, to reach out to people who are in need, to speak words of comfort and to share the good news so that they can know Jesus and receive Jesus as the personal Lord and Savior. This is the time that we are in. And this is also why Jesus gave us the great commission to go and make the world be his disciples. And we are doing this, doing this, uh, but this time, the world is still in, in trouble. It's so difficult. That's why Jesus, in verses 34 and 36, is preparing his people, his disciples, his followers, preparing us that watch yourself, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and cares of this life. And that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. We wouldn't know when he will come again or where the trouble will come. It will come suddenly. So Jesus said, when we, on one hand, we want to trust in Jesus. On the other hand, we want to share the good news. And there is a, a lot of uh, uh, temptations, challenges. Watch. Watch yourself. For it will come upon all who dwell on the face of the earth whole earth, but stay awake at all times. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus said when we are here at this time, stay awake at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is what Jesus was preparing us for the present. Until he comes again, we can expect troubles, trials, and temptations. Our adversary, the, evil, the devil, does not rest his attempt to lure us away from God's will for our lives. If he cannot succeed in getting us to renounce our faith in Christ, Satan will try little by little to distract us from pursuing God, especially in prayer and in listening to his word. So we need to ask the Lord to rekindle the fire of his love in us so that we will be ready and eager to meet him when he comes again. We need to always, every day, we need to pray and ask the Lord Jesus, come, come into my heart, come into my life, rule me, take, protect me, and keep me from falling into temptation. This is our prayer. So, Advent is not just about Jesus born in the manger. It's not just about looking for his coming. It's more for us while waiting. We need to know how to continue to ask him to come. And so hope in this context isn't about ignoring trouble like an ox street, put the head in, in the ground. Ah, oh, I see nothing, I see nothing. Jesus, you say you will protect, you are still with the king. Everything will be well, everything will be well. We need to face our life, not ignoring, but about seeing beyond it. How to see beyond when you see all the miseries, 
You don't just stop at that surface reality, but we ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate our eyes. Pray and ask Him to help us see beyond that, to see God's hidden hand. God's word will be true. God is still seated on His throne. See beyond that. That is where our hope comes from, my dear brothers and sisters. So whenever you feel down, whenever you feel puzzled, don't know how to go about, we pray that, Lord, you lift up my eyes to look up, look up to you, knowing that you are the faithful word, God, and you come and help me to remain faithful, to follow you to the end. Because that is still the final coming, because Jesus continued to say, then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. This second coming is different from his first coming in the flesh. His first coming in the flesh, incarnated word incarnate, become flesh. He was born as a little baby, vulnerable, cannot take care of himself in a manger, need to be carried around so that he can grow like one of us into adulthood to take whatever that we are supposed to take for our sins. He, that was his first coming. But his final coming, he said, you will see the Son of Man this time coming suddenly in the crowd. There isn't a need for him to be in the womb for nine to ten months, hidden. But this time, prominent, visible, in a crowd. And this time, with power and great glory as the judge of the world. This is also why in our confession of the ministry of faith, every Sunday during Holy Communion time, we say this mystery of faith that we proclaim. This is the centre of our belief. Central call. Let us read, proclaim again together. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. You remember that? Christ is died. First coming in the flesh. Christ is risen. Now, in our heart, Christ will come again. The coming of Son of Man. It's not just a moment of judgment or destruction, but a moment of redemption and restoration. To the unbelieving ones, the worlds, the principalities, it will be at that time a time of judgment and destruction. To those who continue to call upon his name, believe in him, hold on to him, this will be a time of full redemption and full restoration. The righteousness of God will be fully revealed. Everything will be put right again. To me, that time, that full restoration is also a reset for the worldly power, the worldly principalities. At this time, that time, the political Petitions, they can do what they want. But when Jesus comes again, he is the King of kings, Lord of lords. He is the sovereign one. And everything will be put right. No longer all this worldly power struggle. Full restoration of our relationship with God and full restoration of the creation. And so church, and final conclusion, these four candles which just I asked the children, hope, peace, joy, love. These are so important life force that we need from God to help us stay faithful. And it's all 
compass in Jesus Christ, the righteous branch, He alone. And every year, event is a time for God to realign us. If we have gone slightly astray, if we have gone uh, a bit black, back uh, slighted, uh, not praying much, not depending on God much, this is the time again that God wants to put us, call us back, realign us. And we look back on the road we have traveled, recognize the current situation, bring before God what is our current situation, and adjust our pace to move forward. In event, this event, we look back to the past and be grateful to Jesus Christ coming to us in the flesh as an infant born in the manger who lived a righteous life for us. But more so in this event, let us resolve to invite Jesus to come into our hearts daily to stay with us and help us stay watchful and hopeful. Look beyond the distressing signs to the greater promise of his return and the redemption of all things. This event. Let us ask the Lord to help change us from inside out so that we will be fervent to share good news to the world. Share. Do you have friends, colleagues, relatives, your loved ones who are yet to know Jesus? This is the time that God is still opening the door of grace for them to turn back to Him through you, through me. Let us pray and ask God this event to help us don't just care for our, about ourselves, but also care for that souls that Jesus loves so much. And so in this event, we wait with longing hearts, anchored in the certainty that God's kingdom is coming in fullness and justice. Would you do that? We want to end today's uh, sermon with an ancient prayer, a long church, long prayer, a long time prayer. And it is also taken from the last verse of the Bible, Revelation chapter 22. Maranatha. Would you please stand? I will lead, we will say this three times as our true prayer, true expectation. God, Lord Jesus, and these three comings. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. Come, Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Amen. We will remain standing as we sing this response song. Righteousness revealed the Son of. 